Father God, we do thank you for this time. We come before you humbly, yet boldly, even as you said in your word, that we can come to you with our requests, with our needs, with our desires. But before we do that, Lord, we ask your forgiveness for anything that we've done during the week, knowingly or unknowingly, that was not pleasing to you. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord God, and that this day we can start off with a brand new slate. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. You thank you that you gave your son for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we just pledge to you that we will live proclaiming the name of Jesus. Amen. That we will live as witnesses of your glory and your mercy. Hallelujah. That we will live as ambassadors to you, Lord God, reconciling the world to you. Letting them know that you are good and a faithful God. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you though that all of our needs are met. Lord, we lift up our country, and you see, you see what a crisis we're in. You see it. And Father, we humbly beg that you would fix our country. Yes, Lord. Fix our country, Lord. Bring us back to the knowledge of Christ, to the real knowledge of Christ, Lord. Father, we pray for those people that are in authority over our country. We ask them, Lord, that we ask you that you would open the ears so that they can hear what you're saying to them, Lord. We come against the enemy from blocking their understanding of the word and their, their mission in the roles that they play. And Father, we thank you that you will put your hand on them for good and that you will heal them, heal their souls, heal their bodies, heal their, heal their minds, Lord God, so that they may govern us according to your word. We give you praise for what you're doing. We know, Lord, that you do all things well. And this is no exception. You will save our country. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for it. We pray for every member of this church and every member who has a need. Lord, you know what the needs are. And so we ask you that you meet them at their needs level. We thank you that you're increasing our faith day by day and that we can know that we rely on you and that you will not fail. We thank you, Lord. We give you all praise and glory for this day, for the days to come, and for all that you have done already. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is still good, and his mercies endure forever. We're going to go to Psalm 9. And we're going to look at verses 7 through 12. But the Lord reigns forever, executing judgment from his throne. He will judge the world with justice and rule the nations with fairness. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. Tell the world about his unforgettable deeds. For he who avenges murder cares for the helpless. He does not ignore the cries of those who suffer. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and application of his word. Amen. The Lord said, I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more in Hebrews 8, 12. 
Forgiveness means we will be merciful to the iniquities of those who trespass against us. The Lord, when he taught us to pray, said for us to forgive those who trespass against us. One of the things I'd like to concentrate on is who do we forgive? Remember, who do we forgive? Everybody. Everybody. Ourselves, other people, and God. Amen. Some people have the nerve to be mad at God and won't let him off the hook. What do we forgive? Everything, everything that hurts us, everything that makes us mad, everything that we think is an offense, every slight, whether the person meant to do it or not, they knew that that was my, and you fill in the blank, all the way from my spouse to my seat at church. When do you forgive? Immediately. immediately. You don't hold on to it. Because if you don't forgive immediately, you may forget to forgive. Amen. And bury it and minimize it and make it seem like, oh, that's no big thing. Where do you forgive? Wherever you are. Wherever you are. You don't have to wait till you go to church. You don't have to wait till you see the person. Forgive them immediately, and then as soon as you see them, get it straight with them, if that's possible, as much as in your power. Why? Why you forgive them is because God said so. Amen. Now, a lot of times, if you don't forgive, what you will find is that the Lord will prompt you and remind you. If you don't forgive, unforgiveness has collateral damage. Amen. It can affect your physical health. If you've been wondering why you couldn't get over the aches and pains, especially the ones in your neck and in your head and in your back and, oh, I can't walk like I used to, okay? See if bitterness isn't rooted in your bones. Amen. Forgive because plotting revenge is what you will do if you don't forgive. You try to figure out some kind of way to make them feel bad, make them feel sad, and you become a monster to your own life and to the lives of those around you. Unforgiveness issues mean it's like pulling a scab off of a wound. If you forgive them, and then, no, nah, I'm not forgiving them, and you begin to bleed again, you open the sore, and you have to heal all over again. Amen. Anger makes you feel powerful. You need to use that energy to do something good. Pride keeps anger in place, and forgiveness is for us. It's for me. Is it for you? Yes. All right. Unforgiveness destroys our bodies, our peace of mind, and relationships. There's a song my father used to listen to called, I Pay the Cost to Be the Boss. Amen. When you want to pay the cost mm -hmm. to be the boss over holding grudges against people, you're going to pay a cost, and it's not going to be lovely. Amen. Forgive, because God has forgiven us. Amen. Will you get together, please, and minister to each other? The splendor of the king. The splendor of the king. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great! 
This is a, a new song. I did not write it. It's called uh, Great Things. And um, the words are, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things, great things. And there are a few more words. But we'll start with that. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Sing with me. I'm, I'm expecting, expecting great things. 
expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Sing it again. Hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Glory to God. In my home, in my home, repeat, you do. my home in my home in my home you do great things in my life you do great things all around you do
faithful and true. You're faithful and true. Great are you, Lord. Most holy, Most holy Lord. Faithful, faithful and true. Great are you. so glad I can count on him, depend on him for every need that I have. Amen. My breath, my body, everything that I am is because of him. Amen. Los Angeles Four Square Church announcements. Hebrews 10 25 says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together more frequently. We invite all members and friends of the Los Angeles Shabbat Four Square Church to come together and participate in the following weekly phone conference meetings for 2022. Prayer every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Stir, if you desire to learn more about the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit and how to operate in those gifts, please join us for STIR. STIR is taught by Pastor Johnson every Monday from 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Reading and homework assignments are mandatory. Please see Ernestine Etter for more information, but you can see the website as well. Tuesday is forgiveness class, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Tuesday evening prayer is 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Men Talk meets the first and second Tuesday of the month from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Men Talk is for men only, ages 18 and up. So ladies, don't try calling men. We've been excluded. <laughs> Goal Settings, Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. In goal setting, we come together to share long-term and short-term goals and receive encouragement and prayer to carry them out. How many of you know you, you need encouragement and prayer to carry out anything, especially Amen. goals that you want to achieve? Amen. You need encouragement and prayer. Comforted is a support group for people who have lost a loved one. The loss can be recent or in the past. Comforted meets every other Thursday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Future meeting dates are September 8th through the 22nd, October 6th through the 20th, and November 10th. We invite you to visit our church website at lasfc.org where all of this information, including phone numbers and access codes, are listed on the first page and under announcements. In an effort to ensure the safety of those who assemble in the sanctuary, we are asking for your cooperation with the following guidelines. If you have tested positive for COVID and are waiting on test results, please remain at home. If you have symptoms such as fever, chills, cough, difficulty breathing, body aches, headache, or congestion, please remain at home and get tested. N95 masks are now required to enter the sanctuary. You may bring your own. Cloth masks are no longer acceptable. You must keep your mask on during the entire service, and that is covering your mouth as well as your nose. Please do not touch, hug, or shake hands with anyone. Do not congregate in the aisles or anywhere inside the church after service. Please allow for the usher's directions and exit immediately. Thank you. Do we have any birthdays today or this week? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Gwen, Gwendolyn McClendon, God bless you. May you have many, 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 
many more long, strong, healthy, prosperous, productive years in Jesus' name. Keep on being and doing what, who you are and what you do best, and that's magnifying the Lord. Amen. We're going to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy humongous blessing that she is to the body of Christ. Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors? I don't see any visitors. We're all home folk. Well, thank you for coming. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. You know, um, I'm going to talk about something that's basic, but how many of you know that sometimes basics are skipped over or not known or omitted, amen, in our lives. And it can work havoc, wreak havoc, if the basics are not taken care of. Well, I thought I was gonna talk about the basics. My notes are gone. Satan is a liar. Okay. Thank you. You know, uh, we have a we have a mighty God, and because He's our God, He's asked us to represent Him. And there are ways that He has brought us into His family. I'd like to have a little pop quiz, and you tell me, how has God brought us into the family of God? By salvation, accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. All right, that's a wonderful thing. Guess what? It's not enough. Amen. Salvation is enough on his part. But we have a part to play, too. We have a part to play, too. Um, even people that don't know God have come to realize that there are certain things that can breach godly relationships. And they may not know God. There was a lady named Emily Post back in the day. Somebody raise your hand if you've ever heard of her. All right, what did she do? I, I never heard her talk about Christ. But she talked about what? Etiquette. What is etiquette? How to behave. Proper manners. What? Proper behavior. All right. Proper behavior according to the world's definition? Yes. Okay. Oh, I don't think everything she said was unscriptural, though. Because she talked about love, yeah, ways to love, too. I, I don't think she was telling people to do damnable things, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. But in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, we're told something. Um, first person to get it, you read it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, 16. If you don't have a Bible or have a phone where you can get these scriptures, you can uh, raise your hand. And Sister Stephanie, 16. verse 16, Matthew chapter 5. Let your light shine. So shine before men, before men that, they may see your good works, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. There was a man that 
had asked Jesus into his heart to be Lord and Savior of his life, and he wanted to glorify God. And he had a vision, he had a mission, and he was against abortion because God says, thou shall not, what? Kill. Kill. And he was passionate about this. He went and picketed outside of these clinics that are abortion clinics, you know, saying that God said, thou shalt not kill. He had signs, you know, posters or whatever they call them, up and everything. And one day he just was so tired of women going in there killing babies. So he decided that he himself would help with this situation. And he waited until the clinic closed that night. He was very patient, brought his lunch too. And what I'm told is he waited until the doctor came out and he killed the doctor, abortion. Do you know, you can be, feel very strongly about something but you have veered off from representing God. Amen. You might have started off with a good thing. Amen. Amen, even. Amen. It is necessary for us to understand what God not only wants from us, but how our light should shine. You know, Sister Rogers just read, let your light shine. What does that mean? I mean. I don't have a flashlight. Nothing about me lights up, or you either, does it? What does it mean to let your light shine? Let people see Christ through you. Let people see Christ through you. Did his picket signs show? Signs show what God was saying? No, no, his signs. Yes, they did. Those signs did. He had scriptures on them too. Thou shalt not kill. Those picket posters are signs. Uh huh. Yeah. How did he get in trouble? He killed. He killed. He dishonored. Okay. So we can start off with good intentions and end up not serving God. Okay. Look at First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirty-one. Who's got it? Uh, there has no temptation taken man such as is common there is no temptation that has overtaken man or such as is common to man where God will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So to say, I, I just have to do this because I'm so adamant or I, I just want to know or I just, no. God will make a way of escape so you can stay in line with his word and his will. We have to keep checking ourselves. How is it that God makes a way of escape? Through his word, he'll tell you. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Well, this man rationalized, if I fix it where this doctor can't kill people, babies, you know, before they're really born, then God will be glorified. But that was faulty thinking. It still excused the fact, he thought, that he was doing what God said don't do. He wasn't walking in humbleness. He was walking in pride. Sister Rogers is offering that pride was taking over in his life. Mm -hmm. He was doing what? He was deceived. Amen. Have you ever heard this scripture before? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. 
and it's your good, but I'm trying to do good, but I meant well. But anybody can see that this, this is a good thing, but it's evil spoken of. I remember when I was training people, we had a ministry alliances. One of the things I said was when you go to, uh, we used to have different ways that we would minister on one Saturday a month, the ministers. And then we would go street witnessing. Sometimes we'd go to a mall, or sometimes we'd go to places, or sometimes we'd knock on doors, different things. And I said, you don't go in people's houses. Amen. And uh, even people that you know, and the wife's not there, and just the husband's there, and you're a woman, you, you don't need to go in that house. I, 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 I'm trying to bring a track. <laughs> I, he need to be saved. He need another dip, and she went home, and I said, well, while she's at the store, I'll just uh, get the brother straight. Oh, she said, put the track in the mailbox. Okay. Well, there was a woman, uh, when we came back, the folks told on her, she went in so-and-so's house, and she knew he wasn't there. Well, we just friends. In the middle of our active witnessing or letting our light shine, don't you ever think that the enemy doesn't want to disfigure or blemish or cause people to mistake or their minds to create a plot that would diminish the light in you. It may even be a lie. But as much as lieth within you, you want to do those things that let your light shine. So when God says, don't give the devil place, he gives the devil place when we are going to do it anyway. Okay, so God has specific sets of rules that help us let our light shine. Did you know that it is dishonoring to the Lord? for his servants to be perceived as rude and uncouth. Amen. It's dishonoring to the God we serve. Amen. It's dishonoring. It's dishonoring not to have a tongue that you bridle. Amen. 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 So in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it talks about our goal. I'm saying G-O-A-L. Our goal to let our light shine. Anybody got that? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. Where, whether you're eating or you're drinking. Now these aren't spiritual things, are they? I'm just eating a snack, having a snack. Or whatever you're drinking, if you're drinking. Then it says, or whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of the Lord. There was a scripture in the Bible where it said that Jesus was ministering to different people, and some of them were what they call winos now. And so people started saying he must be a wino because he's talking to those people and standing right there talking to them. They didn't know what he was saying, but because if they had heard, they would have seen that he was not partaking in, in uh, alcoholism at that time. You know what I'm saying? But that he was maybe even talking about sober things or sobriety, but anyway. We know that God has a plan, and part of his plan is not just saving us, but for us to start living for him. And how to honor God should be our goal. This goal is a way to remove barriers and create connections with people. To remove barriers and create connections. Whenever you see strife or schism, understand 
the Holy Spirit has left. You're not there. The Bible says that he departs when there's conflict and confusion. Uh -huh. But he told you to let your light shine. Do you know what to say? Do you know what to do? Do you know how to let that light shine? Two weeks ago at my house, all the power went out and found out that it wasn't just at my house, but in the whole community. And the first thing on my mind was how to get some light in this house. It was pitch black dark, it was nine at night. So I'm remembering where I put the lanterns that I have, okay? So one I keep on what I call a park bench in my house. I just leave it there at all times, so I won't have to figure where is a flashlight, where is that? It's always gonna be there, I don't take it. So I knew I could fumble down the hall, fumble and fumble until I got to that bench in my house. I was thinking, where is the light? This is what we have to do in our interactions with people. When you see darkness trying to come, you better find the light and turn it on. Sometimes the light is to shut up. If you don't participate, it's a one-way street. All right. Good manners honor God. It's always a way to remove social barriers. It's all, there is always a way to create connection with people instead of cutoffs. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 tells us the first light rule about how to let your light shine. <clears throat> Romans 12, 12, anybody got it? Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in Be patient in tribulations. Continue instant in prayer. Continue instant in prayer. All right, three things. Rejoicing in hope. Guess what? When the enemy shows you this is a mess, God is saying don't agree with it. Amen. It's not a mess if you know how to clean up the mess. Amen. You understand what I mean? Amen. Your job is to be light. So when I say it's a mess, I'm, I'm acknowledging, oh, oh, here's some darkness here. But remember, you go find that light. What should I do in a case like this? How can I let that light shine? How can I remove this darkness? So the first thing is rejoicing in hope. Okay, your attitude needs to not be nasty, grumbling. You don't need to assume the tenor of the situation. You don't need to agree with the basis of that darkness. And you hear you go dark. Uh-uh. Rejoicing in what, Janelle? Rejoicing in hope. Now, what does God tell the Christian to hope in? Hope in God. You have hope. Don't ask like, act like there's no hope. Because God is constantly with you. We don't have to throw our hands up and say, ooh, this is a mess. I'm through. I'm done with it. Ah, da, 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 da. You need to know how to let your light shine. God says, so I send you. So send I you. He sent you to make the light. You know, if we keep thinking, I sure wish this world was a better place. Oh, God, it's a mess out here. Why do you think you're still here? Why did you wake up this morning? To bring the light, to change it. That's right. I'm just me. Uh huh. Just you can impact others one-on-one, -on -one, situation after situation. But it's not going to happen if you're not a person that's rejoicing. Do you know how many people are so angry that the, the ratio of anger in them spills out on their breakfast table, when they wake up, 
there's always something that the <laughs> what is in you is going to come out. God wants light in us and rejoicing. Now, how when when is the assignment? Those of you that are students of the word, when is the re assignment from God? When is it, is it appropriate to rejoice? Always. Always. How many? minutes out of the hour 60 minutes all right rejoice in the Lord what always and again I what say rejoice when you see the threat of darkness impending strife don't you go with it you're not your own do you understand that you bought with a price get the light and shine it rejoice did you? Yes, sir. I'm going to read it. I'm going to say it when you say it. Rejoice in our confident hope. Amen. What translation is that? The New Living Translation. Isn't that beautiful? Rejoice in our confident hope. Hope is not lost when you see something negative. When you see something that some folks say, this grates my nerves, guess what? You're not walking in the right place. Amen. Amen. Your rejoicing is not supposed to be like a yo-yo. Oh, such and so, now I'm down. So, and the, there they go, I'm down. Now this happened, I'm down. Your rejoicing is supposed to be always. And again, I say rejoice. God called us something. He called us salt. Salt. What's salt for? To, to season. Oh, it's a, pre it's a preservative, right? Uh, they say they used to use a lot of salt before refrigeration. They would salt meats and different things to keep them from spoiling, okay? But God likened his children to salt, those that walk in his word. You season a situation. Then he talked to us about seasoning again. He said, let your words be seasoned with grace with grace. Are your words seasoned with grace? You're rejoicing always. That rejoicing is a daily assignment. A lady called me about a situation and, and got upset with me because she wanted me to be mad at who she was mad at. I said, that's not the street I walk on. I said, that's not where God called the Christian. Yeah, but if they did this to me, what if they did it to you, how would you feel? I said, first I would love them. Then I would forgive them. I said, people can't do any better when they're wounded and angry, messed up inside, how are you going to get a good end product coming out? Wounded people, they hurt other people. Broken glass, what happens when you handle it? It cuts. You're seeing an index of their brokenness. And you are not uh, carrying an assignment to show them, I can show you what brokenness is. You think you could cut me? You, you're not going to know you've been cut till I cut you. <laughs> Christians not knowing their assignment. Does it mean that everything that happens in this world, you'll like it? No. But you need to know your authority in Christ and your assignment is not to get naked with the naked. Amen. Amen to stay covered by the blood, Amen. covered. Well, they're Christian after all. Like I say, the Christian part is something God does. He's the one shed the blood for us. 
He's the one that made us acceptable in the brethren if we receive him as Lord. But we haven't even begun our journey. You haven't taken the first step when you, when you ask Christ in your heart to be Lord and Savior. And then you continue to do everything you want to do because you feel like it and ignore everything God said. Amen. Think about it. Because I feel like it. That is the motivating force for most human beings. Why did you do that? Because I feel like it. Why you got kids all over the nation and you don't even know all their names and lost count? Because I felt like it. Uh, why do you so and so? Because I feel like it. God wants us to begin to emulate him. The fruit of the spirit is God's character. All right. So Romans 12, 12 tells us something. What should we think of? In Romans 12, 12, who is it telling us to think of? I'm sorry, 12, 10. Ten uh, no, 12, 10, Romans chapter 12, 10, verse 10. Be, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. So this lady that wanted me to be mad, I said, do you have that lady's address? I'm going to send her a thinking of you card. After what she did, I said, yes, she needs someone to think of her. We get appalled when there's an opportunity to love. But God has called you to love the unlovely. Amen. That is the call. Amen. Amen. Love the people that do what they want to do. Amen. Amen. I told you about the fight that tried to ensue right there where uh, our usher was sitting. Two people arguing about presidential candidates. Both of these people saved, spirit filled. But you gonna fight? It's cause fight is inside of you. Anger is inside of you. Hostility control, all of that, get rid of it. Amen. There's one fight that God has asked us to walk in. What is it? That's it. Fight the good fight of faith. You know what faith is? Calling those things that be not as though they were. You know what faith is? Faith is a healing bomb. It just lets you know your assignment when people are acting ugly. That's where I apply that healing bomb. Amen. That's where I show love to that person that's so, so hurting that they're lashing out and reaching out and out of control. That's where love's supposed to go. We want to love who loves us. We want this. What was that song? We belong to a mutual admiration society. The scripture says that takes nothing. It takes nothing for us to love who loves us. He says in King James Version, what thank have ye? In other words, why should I thank you for being kind to somebody that's been so good to you? That doesn't take anything. Matthew 5, 44, what does it say? Love people that despitefully what? Use you, abuse you, accuse you, act a fool with you. Uh -huh. You haven't begun your walk in Christ until you obey Christ. Amen. You haven't begun. Uh, you just walk it, but you're not walking in Christ. Some of us don't know him until we know him in the power of his resurrection. He is resurrected above hate, Amen. above fighting, above competition, above I want to be seen, above all of that. Go with him. 
on this journey of love. First Corinthians chapter 13 tells you about love, and guess what? Some people would look at it and sing this song. The thrill is gone. <laughs> That's the definition of love. It is not about a thrill. Amen. Uh-huh. It's about sacrifice. It's about giving. It's about learning the love walk. It's about forgiving. It's about pardoning. It's about doing good to people that you know can't stand your guts. I would sit down and think, Lord, show me how I can bless this person. Amen. If you want to walk with Jesus, you're going to have to do it his way. Amen. Amen. All right? So Romans 12.10 would tell us to think of others first. Amen. A lady told me one day, this is not a friendly church. I sit in this seat. I come to church every day. I sit and I wait. People come in and they speak to everybody but me. I said, and so then what do you do? I'm just telling you, y'all not friendly. I said, well, let me tell you what the word says. This is what God's saying for you to do. What? Show yourself friendly. I said, why don't you be a greeter? Why don't you stand at the door and tell everybody hello first, you know? I went to a, a conference once with a lady. We went out somewhere. We didn't know any of the people. When we left, she was crying all the way home about how badly the people had hurt her. I said, what people? I was sitting in there. I didn't see anybody do anything to you. They talked to each other. They never called my name. Did they know your name? She, I don't know those people. I said, I don't either. I heard them calling you. Several people called your name. You even said you could call me Lulu. I said, yeah, because I, but I asked them their names first. I said, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I showed myself friendly. She said, they stuck up in it. It's a cult. <laughs> That's the way cults do. She carried on. Then she called me the next day and said she couldn't sleep that night. She was tormented all night by what those people did to her. She said, and I just want to know why it is they didn't do that to you. I said, well, I talk to everybody. I don't wait for somebody to speak to me. That's not what the Bible says. Did you know the ball is in your court, saints? Amen. The ball is in your court. Show yourself friendly. I didn't know those people. You know, they had their ways on them. And then she wanted to talk because they were a different race than her. So she was going to make it a racial issue. Just one thing after another. When you're not doing the word, you're not going to get the benefit of the word. Amen. When I go places, oftentimes, I may be the only woman. Oft times, I may be the only chocolate unless Dr. Woods is with me. <laughs> and I sometimes just announce myself and say, I am here because everybody likes chocolate. Amen. I said, Mary C's proved that and made so much money, billions and billions of dollars. Seize candy, because Mary sees. She proved that. So that's why I'm here, because everybody loves chocolate. You know what? That man at that place when I was getting ready to leave, could you come back next month? We want to hear some more stories. I said, stories about what? I don't know, C's candy or something. I said, you just like chocolate. <laughs> you know, people don't like me. You don't like yourself. That's what it is. You're waiting for somebody to L-I-K-E you. I know somebody that loves you, gave his life for you. 
Why don't you believe it? Why don't you believe? You need to know who you are. Treat me like a dog. Well, if somebody treats you like I treated my dogs, you got some good treatment. I remember one day I made a Greek salad. We were having company, me and the kids, and I'd set the table so nice and everything. The doorbell rang. We went to welcome our guests, and I came back, and Weenie was on the dining room table eating, and I had it in one of those old-fashioned punch bowls. It had seven kinds of cheese in it, nine kinds of meat, three kinds of olives. It had two ki three kinds of onions, red, white, and green onions. It had all, this Greek salad was off the chain. And he ate it. Oh, I had to forgive him. And I took my company to Shakey's. <laughs> my dog was treated well. You ought not mistreat anything God has made. Amen. Amen. All right. Did you know that when you say thank you, you're honoring somebody? Amen. And when you don't say thank you, it's a dishonor. I'm back to basics. I think we need them. It's a dishonor. Somebody hands you something, you just snatch it. They didn't have to hand you something. Amen. Thank you. Oh, but that was just a child. How would the child know good manners if you don't model it? You know? Yeah. All right. It's a way to remove barriers and create connection with people when you walk in love. So you praise others by saying, excuse me or pardon me. Please. May I so-and-so, or you're welcome. Do you know it's an honor when you tell somebody, hi there, you're honoring them. Passing by folks, I don't know him. Well, then you ought to get to know him. How are you doing? What you doing? Amen. Sometimes I'm in restaurants, I like to bother people because God says that this is his passion. People, God loves people. You are too, too. I like to tell people, let me see what's on your plate. And they show me. And I'll say, Mama said, you have to have something green on there. Now, you know Mama said that. These are adults. And they, oh, oh Lord, is she looking? And they'll tell Mama, look up to heaven. Is Mama looking? And they come back, show me. See, I got a little salad. I said, okay, but it starts conversation, starts conversation. There's no person on planet Earth that doesn't want to be validated Amen. with a hello or, or just an acknowledgement. Sometimes I'll see people across the way, total strangers, and people that are with me don't enjoy me hollering out. I love to holler, <laughs> but ever since my childhood, my mother would say, Lulu, we go so, and don't be hollering. But when nobody's looking, I will holler across the street or something. But if I can't holler and I'm in a place, I'll just wave to somebody. And they look, I don't know you, you know. And I just, <laughs> they, they point me, I say, and they'll, <laughs> uh -huh. sometimes they'll come up and come over to me. Do we know each other? I said, we will in a minute. We will in a minute. How can you ignore who God created? I'm going to talk to you about an abortion. It is an abortion to kill relationships that you could have. You're aborting opportunities for Christ to be seen, because you have the light, right. I heard. Right. You have the light, right? Amen. So 
Well, everybody don't want to go to church. The church is supposed to be portable. Christ in you, the what? The hope of glory. He told you to rejoice in hope. Hope, hope, hope. You have the hope. You have the hope. Because you have him. You know how to hope in God. Take that church with you, okay? All right. Another thing that gives light is when you're not boastful, when you're not arrogant, and when you let your deeds speak for themselves, then you don't have to tell. You know, I did so-and-so for somebody, so-and-so. You can give in secret. Amen. Amen. God is, is glorified. But if you want your praise from men, then you start talking about I, I, I. I'm going to close with this. And we're going to go into this further in, in uh, future sermons. But I'm going to close with this. Can somebody give a testimony and you not play this game? I can top this. Amen. Can you rejoice in their testimony? Yeah. Can you let a child beat you yes. playing checkers? Yes. Can you let someone win at Scrabble? Yes. I know a pastor didn't speak to his wife for over a week because she won at Scrabble. And she called me for counseling. She said, I, I don't want to be in sin. But I have a feeling I've got unforgiveness in my life. I need to be brought into forgiveness. But I, this is really serious. He come tapping on my shoulder in the midnight hour. She said, you ain't speaking in the day. Don't be trying to do no quiet speaking, you know. <laughs> uh -uh. So she said, do I, need, do I need help? I said, yeah, you have unforgiveness. Pride, pride. Sometimes people do things out of pride because they're competitive. Pride, remember pride is competition. That was Lucifer's sin. I wanna be like God. He couldn't stand to see somebody else prosper in anything, you know. Can a little child know something more than you. And can you say, honey, thank you. I didn't know that. So-and-so, you teaching me that? You pointed this out? You, you know, and, and praise him, can you do that? Amen. Amen. Pride, it comes before destruction. It does. A man kept telling this child to get him water, get me this, get me that. I was in the midst. So I decided I'm going to thank this child. Thank you for getting your father that glass of water, sweetie. That was so nice of you. How kind. It was half empty. I wanted a full glass. That's what he said. She went and got some more water. Children are vulnerable, and so are adults. But we should not be hurt and wounded by the callousness of our lack of love in the body of Christ. There should be no wounding. I'm trying to find somebody that can uh, do banners for me or figure out how to get banners. A no huckabug zone. Okay? No huckabug. It's not in God. We, we, we are the church. This body is his temple. Amen. All this cutting up and talking extra, it's not of God. God is love. 